the problem. Here's the model our schools are built on. Okay. Our schools were designed in the 1920s based on ideas from the 1890s, smack dab in the middle of the Industrial Revolution. Schools are, it's a factory model. Kids are widgets, right? Kids start school at age five or six, depending on where you're at, and we perform a certain operation on those kids for a set amount of time, right? Typically about 180 days, right? Take those six years old, six year olds, and we do the same thing to all those kids for 180 days. At the end of that set amount of time, we move them to the next spot on the assembly line, which we might call second grade. And again, for a set amount of time, time is fixed. Problem is, when I get to that finish line and look around, I'm almost always all by myself. So as a teacher, I don't want to get to that finish line and say, great, I covered my content, but hey, the kids are way back there. When I try to picture the world, and get old American centric stuff, this is what I picture. Problem is, this map isn't very accurate. Okay, this map is actually more accurate in terms of land mass. So, let's go back for a second. Take a look at the size of Africa. <coughs> nope, Africa is really more like that big. And how about South America? Nope, it's more like that. If you take a look at uh, Greenland and Antarctica, now this map isn't perfectly accurate either. And the angles are a little messed up. Anytime you try to take some of those three dimensions and try to make it in two dimensions, it's going to be messed up. But in terms of land size, this is more accurate. I think it makes a difference when kids are talking about Africa if they think Africa is that big or if they understand that Africa is really that big. And of course, how you orient the map matters as well. Because what if we showed our kids this? I think it makes a difference if we talk to our kids, what if we thought of ourselves as down under instead of Australia? There's no reason Australia has to be under and we're on top, right? We drew the maps, so we decided to orient it that way. I think they need to understand that you could very well just look at the world that way. just being able to read the 8th and 9th grade letter. It's writing, and it's critical thinking, and it's mathematical literacy, and scientific literacy, and artistic literacy, and we've done a lot of really good work around literacy, I think, in school. But I still don't think we know exactly what it means to be literate in the 21st century. Because reading and analyzing these is very, very different than reading and analyzing these. <coughs> this is the world that our kids live and learn and are going to work. Much more, it's about learn how to learn, right? It's not just about finding the content because there's just oh, way so much content out there. It's how to learn how to learn. And as Hoffler says, the literate of the 21st century will not be those who can't read or write, those who can't learn, unlearn, and relearn. Our